Hello, my name is Matthew Harrison uh, and I'm a farming system scientist at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture and this webinar follows similar APSIM videos that I've started since 2018 with APSIM Classic. This webinar will be with APSIM Next Generation which is the most recent version and it has a different layout and a different model structure, a slightly different model structure in some areas to APSIM Classic. So when we open up uh, AppSim Next Generation, we have a, a home screen that looks like this with these menus across the top uh, and we have previously opened AppSim examples uh, in this area of the screen here. So these are just examples that I've opened up in the past. So your version of AppSim will most likely look a little bit different to that. Important point to point out is this upgrade button here. I'd recommend that you always try and upgrade as frequently as possible. You hit upgrade and it will come up, assuming you've got a good internet connection, it'll come up with the most recent bug fixes and updates to the model with their corresponding dates. And so once you've read through the terms and conditions, you just hit this checkbox here and then you hit upgrade the model. I won't do it in this, uh, in this webinar because it might take a bit long. So we'll just open up an example. Uh, in this presentation, I just want to show you uh, how um, to run a simulation to think about some of the management that we might apply in a simulation for example irrigation and, and nitrogen fertilizing within a season but also thinking about some of the outputs how to interpret the outputs and what to do when when we get some errors because a large part of modeling is bug fixing and fixing errors so it's normal to have errors all the time but you've just got to be able to interpret what happens when it goes wrong and reasons for diagnosing the error and you can go back into the model and potentially fix it and rerun it without an error. So I've just opened up the maze example here. We have this simulation tree on the left hand side. We have a, a larger folder at the top there. We have the simulation. You can obviously copy that simulation and paste it there and create another uh, simulation which is uh, just a direct copy of the previous simulation. You can then delete that simulation. Uh, in the previous version you could copy that and create a linked version as well so you could copy uh, and paste here as a link but I'm not sure that you can do that in this version of AppSim. So if you ex expand uh, the simulation tree you see the clock which determines the duration of the simulation. We might just set that to 1995 because the shorter the simulation uh, the quicker it takes to run. AppSim is a daily time step model. We have a summary log that, that outputs the all the conditions and the uh, directives of the model after it's run. We have the MET file uh, and you can browse and input your own weather, weather directly from a different file or from the example files. Uh, and then you can look at summary outputs of the weather. So for example, these are the cumulative monthly rainfalls and this is the maximum average monthly temperature and this is the minimum monthly temperature. Uh, and then you can look at the individual data with radiation maximum and minimum temperature, rainfall, fan evaporation, vapor pressure, a code and Qmax and then you can look at various weather statistics. Uh, we then have the field uh, and you can replicate fields and within the field we have report, we have soil details, we have surface organic matter, we have the crop type so that's maize in this case and it's, we can't modify that. We have microclimate which is not necessary to run a simulation but it's in the default so we leave it there. You can of course remove it if you like. We have some management rules. So sowing fertilizer, a sowing rule when the crop is sown and the cultivar, as well as the harvesting rule. And then we have various report icons and so various graphing icons rather. So we, we can manipulate the, the types of graph that comes out of there. So it's, it's quite intuitive to use. The data store is for uh, comparing existing versus observed data. So if we just right click on it and we press run, if you're trying to run it out of program files, it will pop up with this box here to say you can't save it in there. So you save save it to your hard drive somewhere in a in a, an obvious directory. So we'll just say uh, we'll put it in my documents. We then see if the simulation is going to run. It then runs down the bottom here. It says it took me three point eight six seconds. We then look at the outputs, and we've got yields that range from. 800, a little bit over 800 grams per square meter down to less than 100 grams per square meter in 1993. So a gram, uh, one gram per square meter, 100 grams per square meter is the equivalent of a thousand kilograms per hectare or one ton for the hectare. So 
800 grams per square meter is the same as eight ton to the hectare. So if we want to, if we're thinking about a rain-fed maize yield, you might say in your environment, is that a realistic yield? Is it high or is it low? Or we might want to compare what-if scenarios of what's the effect of various uh, implementations of, for example, sowing time or genotype on maize yields. So, for example, uh, a maize yield of 800 kilograms or or eight ton to the hectare, a little eight and a half ton to the hectare might not be that high. So we might want to have a look at the effect of applying nit nitrogen fertiliser in season. We're applying 160 kilos of nitrogen per hectare at sowing. So we might say, well, is the crop actually running out of nitrogen? So there's a number of ways that you can look at that. You can actually go into the report here. You can put in another variable, which is maize nitrogen stress. Now, I don't actually know what the, the maize nitrogen stress specific variable is, but if we enter maize and then we hit the full stop, when you hit the full stop, you'll see a number of variables pop up here. And if you read through these variables, one of them should be an indication of nitrogen stress. And if it's not there, well, then we'll look at, we'll look at soil type. So just looking through that, I couldn't actually see nitrogen stress. Uh, so it could be, that's probably because I read through it too quickly, but the other thing that we can do is we can go back here and we can go uh, soil. We then hit the full stop and up will pop a list. And in here it might have, for example, supply on demand ratio or it ha might have fraction of available N. So there's initial N. We have lower limit, plant available water capacity, which is those variables there. Soil C to N ratio, and I didn't actually say it there. So it, it would be in there somewhere, but for the sake of the argument, I'm not going to do it in this case. The other way that we can do it, which is much easier to do, uh, which I might do in this simulation, is we go back to the home page, we hit the management toolbox, wait for a second for it to pop up, and we're looking for fertilised crop within season manager. So something like fertilise on Zadox stage maybe, or maybe even... Uh, fertilise on a on a fixed date advanced version or maybe fertilise on a fixed date synthesis. So the difference between the advanced version is that we have much more options. So we might copy this advanced version here, go back to the maize example, paste it on our field. And now we need to look carefully at the management information here. Apply fertiliser on the same day of each year, yes dates for one or more fertilizer applications with a list of commas between dates. So let's just have a look at our sowing rule. We're sowing it anywhere between the 1st of November and the 10th of January. So on the 10th of January you'd always think that the maize crop has emerged. So let's apply it, for example, the fertilizer are always on the maybe the 1st of February. And the 1st of March. Uh, use, and this is a test for mineral N in the soil, and don't apply fertiliser if it's greater than X kilograms per hectare is stored in the soil above the depth of Y millimetres. So do we want to use a soil mineral N to prevent the application above a threshold? No. Uh, so that means these two conditions are then ignored. Uh, the depth at which to apply the fertiliser below the surface, 50 millimetres I think is appropriate. Uh, we might change that to 10 millimetres. Amount of fertiliser to apply per application, we want that to be relatively large to see if there's an effect, 100, and then urea N, or we could have direct N, or we could have nitrate N, or ammonium N, and there's a number of different examples that we could have there. So we could have nitrate N, ammonium N, uh, ammonium sulphate, and so on and so forth. So we might go for uh, n uh, ammonium, ammonium N, uh, just to see what happens there. You can obviously go back and rerun a simulation. So we just right click again and press run. So it's run successfully. We can obviously look at the simulation log. If there's errors, they will pop up here, but you can see the individual details of each day of the simulation, what's happening. So 100 kilograms of uh, ammonium N has been added at depth 10 millimeters in layer one and so on and so forth. You can then see the crop emerging. You can then see you know, what's happening on specific days. We then go and look at the graph, and we haven't really got any difference. So that would indicate that the crop is not nitrogen stressed. 
So another thing we might look at as well is the crop water stress. So again, what we could do is we could go back here and put in maize water stress and look at look specifically at water stress over the season. So that's that's probably the most the appropriate avenue. And then to change management, we go back to the home screen. We go back to the management toolbox. We look for irrigating. So we might uh, do an automatic irrigation. We copy that. We go back to the maize example. We paste it in the field. Uh, and then we specify the de details. Remember to fill in the crop to irrigate, which is always blank. So the crop to irrigate is obviously maize. It's based on this component here. The threshold of available water, zero meaning very dry, one meaning complete saturation, so 0.9 is appropriate. The depth has to match the depth of the soil that you put in. So let's just check what our depth was. It was 180 centimetres. So we'll go back to our irrigation manager and we'll set that to 180 centimetres or 1800 millimetres. Minimum weeks between irrigation, we want it to be regular as possible, so we'll say one. Minimum days after sowing to first irrigation, two days is fine. Uh, and now we rerun the simulation. And what we have here is an error. We can't actually find the link for irrigation in the model. And so you can hit more information there, but it's often uh, not that intuitive unless you've got specific coding knowledge. So the error is often this one here. Cannot find a match for linked cannot find a match for link in irrigation in the model. So what that means is that we need a specific irrigation manager in the model. So again, we go back to the home screen. We look for our standard toolbox, and we're looking specifically for an irrigation manager. So if we go to standard models, we see irrigation here. We right click on that. That's the one we want, which you can't modify, but it's essentially hardwired. We go back to the home screen. Uh, we go back to the appropriate level, which is the field, the same as the fertiliser, right click on field and we paste. So now we have the irrigation module, you can't do anything there but it has to be there. And then we rerun the simulation. So it's, so it's run. Now we look at the yields and we've got a large difference. So those yields obviously vary between years because of different temperature, radiation, uh, uh, and radiation conditions and you can see that we're nearly up to 10 tonnes of the hectare here and our minimum yield is a little bit less than 9.45 tonnes of the hectare which is very good. So th then we might say well what's the effect of sowing a different cultivar? Uh, so if we go back to our sowing module which is sowing rule is here we have this decalb uh, cultivar to be sown we might say what happens if we sow a pioneer, hybrid, uh, pioneer cultivar and Apsim has a number of varieties that have been calibrated to Pioneer, and you can try each of these here. So we might try this bottom variety, and then we right-click on the simulation, rerun Apsim. And you can see that the initial yield is quite low, and that might be we might want to delve into that simulation to see exactly why that is. The other yields are up around 8.5 tonne to the hectare, so quite distinctively different yields to the other variety. So if we want individual model results, we can go back into the report and we can actually click on this tab here, data, and we can see the actual data coming out. So we can see in that first year, we've got a very low maize yield. So maize above ground weight is about half a tonne to the hectare. So we could, uh, we could essentially look at individual temperature traces or individual moisture stress traces from the model to see why that was. You could also think about putting out different outputs. You could say, uh, for example, what's the root depth on a specific day? What's my soil moisture? How is my nitrogen tracking? We could also look at temperature stress, which is very important. So what we're doing here is we're essentially outputting variables on a daily time step, but we might want to say, well, what, uh, sorry, we're, put, we're putting them out at harvest time. So it's coming out 1991, in February 1992, February again 1993, but we might say, well, we actually want to have a look at daily time steps. So to look at daily time steps in the model, we go back to report, we go to properties, and instead of maize harvesting, we might get rid of that. And we don't want maize, we want clock. Uh, and we want end of day. So we double click on end of day, we r then rerun the model. We would now expect it to take a little bit longer because it's outputting daily values. Much more.
points. So in contrast to a single point at the end of the year, we're now looking at the individual growth uh, over the course of the season. So it's much more intuitive if you want to look at the course of growth throughout the season. And you can see that this one here is again truncating off quite early, about three and a half tonne to the hectare, compared with all these others which go around about eight tonne to the hectare. So we might want to look at, at temperature stresses or, or other reasons why this crop is not growing to that extent. But in this way, you can actually interpret why a crop is behaving in the way that it does. Is it moisture stress? Is it nitrogen stress? Is it temperature stress? Have I sown it at an incorrect time? Is it due to the cultivar? Uh, is it, or is it due to something else? So by looking at different components in the model, you can get a handle on why we get a specific error, or if we don't get an error, why a crop behaves in the way that it does. Anyway, that's all for this uh, webinar, and thanks for watching.